How's it going? This is a video really about distraction and distraction ultimately from our own work, our own inner work. And you know, a lot of people listening to this will agree that or will feel that the the media, for example, is a distraction or politics is a distraction. Now we have an awful lot of reality television, we have social media, we have all these things, you know, we're carrying around a, a device that can easily distract us. Another way of putting that is that we easily give our power to, we give our attention and energy to, and I do it too. Quite acceptable these days to see the media as a distraction or as maybe fake news or, you know, propaganda, that it has a, a, a political slant. Now, over the last few years, I don't necessarily see the purpose of the political slant of news stories or maybe school shootings if they're genuine or maybe terrorist attacks if they're genuine as being about the politics it doesn't really matter to me what i see it as is a distraction all of this sucks our energy in we all go in and turn on the tv or we turn on the radio or open our phone and we go oh my god and we we go into trauma and we think oh my god all those people who've died or all this immediately buying into it what the news media is saying now i'm not here to suggest that these things are fake or not happening although to be honest with some of them i certainly would disbelieve i wouldn't give any time or any attention to so more importantly the point of this video is about something that i see as a greater distraction now for the people listening to this video than cnn or fox news or sky news or whoever because most of us don't listen to that shit anyway we don't pay much attention to it now but the greater distraction i think is alakazam <laughs> spirituality <laughs> the ballooning so i started meditating i don't know 24 years ago or something like that and i just i learned tm transcendent meditation and i meditated every day for I don't know, about 12 years I never missed a meditation. I meditated on planes and trains and all the rest of it. So during that time, in the early days, I did read books, you know, on, on the Far East or esoteric works or self-help and meditation and, and religion and that kind of thing. And then I kind of faded out of it and I, it was always a thread within me. But in a way I was kind of getting on with life. Um, and I was trying to survive, you know, I was trying to find my own peace still. Meditation wasn't enough for me. But when I re-found, you know, when I reconnected with the spiritual world, if you like, after many years, you know, only in the last few years, because I wasn't, I wasn't really reading many books on this subject, these subjects. I certainly was not watching anything on YouTube in relation to spirituality. I was unaware that it was there. I watched videos about cars. <laughs> <laughs> listen to music do whatever normal people do i know i'm not really normal and i don't want to know what normal is but anyway you know then i began medicine ceremonies ayahuasca and holotropic breath work and i began to encounter people who would talk about these things and i began to draw in these videos on youtube myself and at times i'd watch them and the archangel michael channeling and whatever guru up on the podium talking about whatever you know the, the ships are going to come and that the, these people have been aligned and they've been brought in and what's happening is the intergalactic battle and they're battling with the elite or the reptilians or whoever and i got momentarily uplifted listening to these things and i kind of thought oh okay this is good this is good this is happening at times i bought into it but very quickly i just kind of moved beyond it and i i kind of thought this isn't relevant for me i don't know if this is real or true or false but now I would see it the same way I see the news. It doesn't matter what they're saying. For me, it's a distraction. So for me, I found that I was and can be so desperately insecure at times that if I listen to the guru channeling whoever, I'll compare myself and I'll think, oh, I didn't get that download. I didn't, I don't hear from Archangel Michael. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Two things can happen. One is I undermine my own power and I think, oh, there's something wrong with me. I'm not having this experience. Or the other thing is I give my power to this being or this person. And I think they know what's happening. I'm going to trust them rather than trusting me. So these days I don't give any of that. I don't do any of that. I very, 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 very rarely watch any of these videos on YouTube. And, and a friend of mine, a woman I'm working with, sent me a, a great video a few days ago and it gave me nothing new. 
but it confirmed and he, in the speaker's own voice I heard some of the things that I would you know I have downloaded myself and I have arrived at myself they have come through me and it's not because I'm special at all I believe that everyone has this information and I believe it's far greater for it to come through yourself through our own being than to hear it from someone else but in saying that as a side note I, I do uh, acknowledge that sometimes hearing it from someone else gives us that ignition it activates a piece of us it puts a piece of the jigsaw in place and we realize oh my god yes that makes sense and it sets us off on a new path but I don't go looking for these things there are people around me that they may send a video they may send an article or recommend a book and many times I'll, I might look at it and I just don't feel anything uh, I don't even look at the video or I might start it in three seconds in or three minutes in I think that's oh, not for me um, a woman sent me a video a couple of months ago and a similar thing happened I kind of just had no interest I totally forgot about it and three weeks later I had a day's work ahead of me and I thought oh, I need something to listen to and that came to mind and I watched that or listened to that while I was working and it was very purposeful the information in it so if there's something out there that we need to get that we need to hear it will find us you know it'll hit you in the face believe me but we tend to see things the other way around we tend to, tend to say, I need to be looking and looking. I need to be watching 20 fucking spirituality videos a day because I might miss something. And in watching the 20, we're diluting all other 19. But what's more important is we're diluting our own gut instinct, our own resonance. And if we shut off the 20 videos and have nothing and be present in silence for a few minutes a day, you know, for the first few days, nothing's going to happen. You're just going to be sitting there thinking... I don't know what I'm going to do in my life or there may be a bit of chaos and that's good you have to go through the chaos but gradually you'll hear that your own voice is quiet it doesn't it's not that vo voice that berates you for 20 minutes or that tells you to leave your partner or to whatever for 20 minutes it's very gentle it's very subtle and more importantly it's connected to your gut you feel it you know what the right move is now I know in a sense I could be shooting myself in the foot because I'm here I am recording a fucking video on spirituality or intuition or whatever it is or shadow work or what I don't even know what I'm talking about but and you may go click go up to the red X or you may unsubscribe I'm okay with that I'll survive <laughs> but my suggestion is if you listen to my video with 20 other videos yeah I'd, I'd suggest close all of them and have a few days of nothing and you might be drawn only to Archangel channelings or the aliens or whatever. Or once a week or twice a week. Or only this and that or a little bit. But just to allow space for you. I think it, it, it kind of comes back to are these videos, are these channelings and so on empowering you? Are they giving you tools? Or are they just giving you information? Now I do acknowledge that some do give tools and they do empower. But a lot of them are just, inf it's just philosophy. And I, I, can't, I can't measure it. I can't tell if it's true or false. If it's delusions of some madman. Or if it's an entity that is, chan is genuinely channeling this to keep people off track. Because what I've seen myself with my own eyes is that people think that there's a shift coming... There are beings coming that are going to, you know, remove the elite or remove the remove the demons, and we're going to be we're going to be living in 5D or 6D or 9D. So that's an incentive to kind of go, oh, we're going to be saved. Like it's going to work out. Whereas my experience is, I had to do my own work. I had to work through it. And just being honest, I I feel that that is the way. I know that some people are, you know, do wake up in the morning, bang, and they're in 5D. It just fucking happened. <laughs> Lucky bastards. But I know there are other people who follow my work or who listen, who relate, and who this work resonates. And for some of us, it's not going to be just a breeze. That it's up to us to walk that untrodden path, to walk into the woods, into the unknown, into the, the darkness and to find our way through it and to work through it 
And there's a reason for that because it gives us strength. We refine who we are. It's not just granted to us. It's not just handed to us. The silver spoon. We don't just wake up and we're suddenly all powerful. We have to earn it. We have to work through our shit. And then the, the, the benefit in that is that those we're around, we have that strength. We know where it came from. And anyone else struggling, if they ask questions, we know how to guide them. We know, well, this is what I do. Maybe it resonates with you. Maybe not. Rather than saying, well, the ships are going to come. You'll be okay. I know you want to cut your wrist, but don't worry, the ships are coming. Or there, there's, there's beings here that are going to save us all. So what empowers you? And I suppose more importantly, are you ready to be empowered? Are you ready to take responsibility for your own stuff? and work through it and there are people like myself that are trying to do that that are moving into that to face our own our own baggage and our own shadow and work through it we're not expecting to be saved by anyone else or any other being so just be aware of that spirituality world you know if there are entities or energies that are steering the news media to distract us to be lost in trauma and panic about the terrorists and the shooters and the Iran or Iraq or whoever else or Donald Trump and we're all worried about him we're all worried about Brexit what's going to happen oh my god isn't it possible then that there are humans or entities that are also behind some of the spirituality world that are telling us that we will be saved so that we put our feet up eat more ice cream watch more reality TV Meditate once a week and think, well, I'm, I'm doing my best. The people or beings that tell us that there is a divide, that there is evil, that it's a war, that it's us against them, against the demons, light against dark, against the reptilians. You know, if you've, if you've listened to much of my stuff, you know, I, I now think that that's nonsense. I think the dark or the supposed, supposed evil or shadow is me. It's just us. It's humanity's shadow that's being presented to be reintegrated and witnessed, brought home, not to be battled. The trick is that if we go off fighting evil, we're just, jet, we're just delaying that integration. We're delaying our own ascension. We're delaying the opening of our own hearts to witness what this is and to make peace with these frequencies. And that might work very well for some people or some beings because it then just continues. Another 10 years of the spiritual battle, you know. I did 10 years fighting demons. It doesn't work. It's a waste of time. I would foresee in the coming years, and I, re I could be wrong, but I really feel it. I feel that shadow work is really going to take off, but I also feel it's going to take off on a watered-down, wishy-washy, spirituality route. And it will people who are teaching shadow work, but they're teaching it on a, a superficial level, working through your tri childhood trauma, but accepting that your parents were evil and they were nasty, and you have to cut them out of their life, out of your life because they're toxic, or that Donald Trump, you know, I I integrate my shadow, but Donald Trump is still evil, you know, that's not shadow work. Shadow work is watertight. Whatever you encounter, you have to have the ability to step back and observe what this frequency is. Why is your higher self presenting it to you? If we start drawing the line and saying, I've done my shadow work, but he's evil and she's evil, and that's nothing to do with me, and that's the reptilian, it just gets bigger and broader and broader, and you're not redoing really shadow work. And what would bother me is that people then think they've done shadow work. They've learned a couple of tricks and tools, They've gone back out in the world. They're still fucked up. They still have fucked up relationships, attracting in violent men or aggressive relationships or problems with their parents or problems with themselves and addiction. But they don't really know where else to go because they think that they've done shadow work. They've been sold this idea that they've actually done it and they haven't really scratched the surface. They haven't gone all the way in. Anyway, see how this resonates with you. See what it feels. It may feel like nonsense. Or it may, you may think it's nonsense. They're two very different things. Or you may feel that something resonates with you. Anyway, there's some links below to my newsletter, Instagram or anything else that may be of interest. My own shadow work course. And uh, be well. Thanks for listening.